Hey humans, Lyric here. You may know me as the Neurodivergent Rebel. I am a late discovered, multiply neurodivergent adult, meaning I was diagnosed autistic at the age of 29 and I was diagnosed with ADHD earlier this year. I didn't know I was neurodivergent for a large chunk of my life. Although when you don't know you're neurodivergent, you still know you're different. That's a whole nother can of worms and a whole nother video. Uh, this week, we're gonna sh I'm gonna share uh, some personal insight as to why, as an autistic person, I often, sometimes, frequently find people to be overwhelming. If you want to know why I find people overwhelming, please stay tuned. Reflecting on myself, the number one reason I find people to be overwhelming, especially as an autistic person, would be that I struggle to read people I don't know. I have gotten a lot better at this since I found out I was autistic at the age of 29. Before I learned I was autistic, I didn't look for information. Uh, in people's faces or their body language to see how they were feeling or to even to see if they were interested in things I was saying. It just never really occurred to me that there was information there. Um, and at 29, I started to study what facial expressions and body language means. And that meant for a very large portion of my life, and even now because I can now, after much study, spot some obvious emotions, like if someone's really mad or is really joyful, but a lot of neutral things are really confusing to me and I can't sort out what like a neutral or less intense face means. I, I, I'm getting better, but I still struggle. Like body language is like this secret decoder you can use to figure out what other people are feeling, that's pretty powerful because I didn't have these tools for a large portion of my life. So that meant I was having really difficult interactions with other people because I wouldn't realize I was annoying them or I wouldn't read the situation well. The person that comes in and does something completely inappropriate for the tone of the room and you're like, read the room! I'm the one that you would be yelling at to read the room because I would come in and completely not read the room. Now, I pay attention much more actively. I may not know what something means, but I'll notice something and can generally gauge if this is maybe a good or a bad response to something. The gray and in-between is more complicated and harder for me to sort out. Not being able to read people very well for a large portion of my life meant I struggled interpreting other people and their intentions and would sometimes misinterpret other people, their feelings and their intentions or overestimate the relationships with other people. I would think people would like me more than they really were when they were just being nice. All of that made me very wary of a lot of relationships with other people. That stems from not being able to read and interpret new people. Though the fortunate thing is I can get to know someone really well and their patterns and their mannerisms and even their facial expressions. For example, a partner who I have been with for a really long time, I can get to know them. But new people are extremely hard for me to sort out and read. Another problem with misinterpretations of others was that people often misinterpreted my intentions and I didn't understand why people were misunderstanding my intentions. I also had problems where people would over or underestimate my capabilities and abilities. This is really hard too because 
sometimes if I know very clearly there's something I struggle with or I'm not capable of, I would try to speak up and would be dismissed and told, no, you know, you can do this. You're just not trying hard enough, things like that. People would insist that I could do things that I was confident I would be unable to do and when I wouldn't be able to meet other people's expectations for me, I would feel as if I was a failure because obviously for whatever reason I was expected to be able to meet the expectation. So I developed a lot of anxiety around the expectations that people have for me that I am unable to meet other people's expectations. I also have a social anxiety diagnosis. When I was diagnosed autistic at 29, I was also diagnosed with social anxiety, which sometimes I think it doesn't bother me that much anymore. We'll be working on a project and have to deal with other people and their expectations for me and my own anxiety about being able to live up to and meet the other people's expectations becomes this out of control monster and it's it's still very real it's still there this is a huge part of why for the most part I work by myself now I still continue to look for work after I was laid off last fall due to COVID from my full-time job and I started working on my own because there wasn't a lot out there in the middle of all of that that was going on with the economy. So I started working on my own while I was looking for work. This past spring, I decided I was going to stop looking for work and keep working on my own because my mental health is so much better when I deal with other people less. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. I, I'm much more calm, happy, and content when I have fewer people and expectations from other people being placed upon me. Business and professional settings make things a bit easier because they tend to have very concrete and clear rules. Uh, I do struggle a lot with, for example, expectations and demands on social media instant messages it's like a social demand that i find overwhelming or the instant messenger on facebook and twitter there's so many instant messengers everywhere i have email all in one place so that i don't have to go everywhere and 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 read all of the messages everywhere that i can't even organize because social messenger or platforms don't have folders and organization and any of those things that I need as a person who has executive functioning problems to organize myself. It's very hard to organize yourself in a social situation. Executive functioning tools are often geared towards the workplace and professional settings and not towards social settings. It's an area I need help. I am doing very well right now because I am playing entirely to my strengths. This is why a lot of autistic people will go under the radar or go undiagnosed because they do what I'm doing. I'm avoiding doing things I am bad at uh, and things that make me feel like an incapable human being. I am specifically sticking to doing the things I am very good at and I'm doing very well because I have tailored my life to my strengths. When I was in the corporate world working for other people and didn't know I was autistic, I would push myself to those neurotypical standards because I thought I was just some kind of lazy neurotypical that for some reason, even though I was trying so hard, I was literally making myself sick. I just thought I wasn't trying hard enough. I needed to try harder. I was killing myself. It was horrible. And that was because of the unspoken and, and spoken expectations of other people. I'm playing to my strengths and it is allowing me to be much more successful in life now that I have 
kind of dropped from corporate America, although I'm still working alongside corporate America and my consulting and education work, I am an independent consultant, which allows me to do everything on my terms. And I set a lot of the expectations and I have right of refusal on things if the expectations don't align with how I need to work. My life has gotten so much better. I would say I am mentally and physically not struggling as much as I was when I had the corporate job. Financially, there is less stability, but I have decided that my health has to come before financial stability because I cannot continue to work if I am unhealthy because of other coexisting health problems I have in addition to being autistic. If those flare up because I am not taking proper care of my mental or physical health, I am unable to do much of anything. So I have to make that a priority above other things and getting burnt out and sick and then being diagnosed autistic at the age of 29 was a catalyst for me that woke me up to all of that and said, something's got to give and I've got to change things and my life cannot be built on fulfilling the expectations of other people. I started asking myself, what the heck is it that I actually want? Okay, humans, I hope you enjoyed this video. I tried to do a less scripted, though I've still been thinking about this video for a while, so it's somewhat scripted, but I didn't put my bullet points in front of me because I wanted it to be more natural to my authentic neurodivergent autistic communication style because the highly edited videos that I script out very carefully lose some of that authenticity. I think when I read them back in the script, when I've been going live, I realize there's parts of my neurodivergence that's hidden when I do those pre-prepared presentations. I'm trying to preserve some of that in these YouTube videos as well. Let me know if you found that helpful and tolerable because I know when I go loose like this without a bunch of bullet points, it is a bit rambly. So if you've enjoyed my neurodivergent ramblings and you're still here, please don't forget to subscribe because I put out new videos each and every Wednesday. If you turn on notifications, you'll never miss an update. Also, thank you to everyone who comments, shares, and engages, especially thanks to those who give video ideas and feedback. I am so grateful because I don't do these videos for me. I do them to help educate, and I hope that the videos and content I am creating brings some value to your day. I want to just say thanks to, while we're here, as always, to the Patreon subscribers, YouTube channel members, and Facebook supporters who do a little bit of a monetary subscription. And as a thanks, get access to videos like this one, usually about a month in advance. <clears throat> it's just a very small way for me to say thank you for the support you give to help me put out high quality videos on a fairly regular once a week. That's pretty regular. <laughs> Maybe someday I'll get the studio putting out more videos more quickly. But right now, I'm the one transcribing them still, even though I have software, thanks to the subscribers. Thanks for that, because I have audio processing problems and it was really difficult for me to do this without a software. So, yay! This vlog is made possible by viewers like you. <laughs> Alright, I'll talk to you humans next week. Bye!